What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of Health, Healing, and Happiness. I am your host, IMG, the Straight Shooter. And today, we're going to be talking about how these masks open my eyes up to something way bigger, way bigger than just these masks. So we're going to talk about that today. Let's get right into it. Okay, today we're going to talk about truth and lies. And the whole thing why, you know, I've been really vocal about how I don't mind wearing these masks, especially like when I walk into the grocery store or if we're really in a crowded uh, subway or bus. Okay, I understand. Not a big deal. Or I, I actually went to the emergency room recently and everybody was wearing their masks and I loved it. I loved that everybody was wearing their masks in the emergency room because half of those people were coughing and and usually back, you know, a decade ago you went to the emergency room and you know, nobody was wearing a mask. Everybody was coughing everywhere. And I love the fact that now if you are sick, you're a little more aware and conscious that you may get somebody else sick. I love the fact there are certain places, but certain places when I'm out in the wide open space, like I, I see it, like they're saying now in the CTA, um, when you're on the platforms and the platforms are 40 feet in the air, 50 feet in the air above the buildings, fresh air, and they want you to wear this mask on a platform, I'm not really, or if they start forcing you to wear it like as you're walking out in the public, like in a park, you know, I've seen they wanted mask signs to wear, you wear a mask. No, I'm not going to wear a mask in the park. I'm out getting fresh air oxygen. This is dirty. I've been breathing on it all day. My body's trying to get stuff out. I don't want to wear it out in public, out in the fresh open space. When I'm inside in closed doors, confined air, in a crowded building that I understand. I love going to the grocery store and everybody has this on a grocery store. I love it. I, I think it's something that we should have done a long time ago. So we're approaching a one year of when this uh, virus started. You know, it was like October, November, sometime last year. And then it made it here to the States uh, around January, February. So it made me think, okay, so what what's going on with the pandemic? Let's see what, what's happening. What are the results? So I Googled the, what was the population for 2019. And as you see here, let me get you a little closer so you guys get a better better look. 2019, 7.7 .7 billion people were on this planet Earth, right? That was prior virus pandemic or the panic pandemic, okay? <laughs> so 2020, what is 2020? What is the population 2020? 7.8 billion people. Wait a minute. Thought there was a major pandemic. The population actually went up. That was just the beginning of my enter into the rabbit hole of what's going on on this planet. So then I was like, okay, so 2019, what was the population of the United States? 329 million people, 64,917, 929 million people. So with this crazy pandemic where people are dying, you got to wear these masks. Obviously, it had to have an effect on our population, right? It had to have an effect on our population. I look, and now this year, 2020, 331 million, five. We're up another, we're up two and a half million people in population. We're up, the population went up. It didn't go down. So then I was like, oh my God, there's, look at the population. So then it made me think of, the Spanish flu, the great Spanish flu of 1918 here in the United States where you just see pictures and all these people are, carcasses are being carried around and people have these, these masks back then, you know, and everybody's wearing that. And okay, so the H1N1 Spanish flu in 1918 killed 675,000 people, 675,000 people estimated in the United States. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. How many people were living in the United States in 1918? 103 million people 100 years ago. That just drove me down deeper into the rabbit hole. I said, wait a minute. There was only 100 years ago, 100 years ago, there was 103 million people in the United States. 100 years later, not a million years later, not a thousand years later, 100 years later, 
The population has now, we are 331 million people. So it's been more than tripled in the last 100 years. What was that? That was 14, 1500? So from 1500, it, it took us to get to 100 million in here. From 1500 to 1900, 400 years. But in 100 years, we more than tripled our population. So I started thinking, I was like, oh my God. What was, the, what, was the, what was the Earth's population back in 1918? The Earth's population was 1.8 billion people. 1.8 billion people? Isn't there something like 1.4, 1.5 million people in China? 1.4, 1.5 million people in India? The whole world was at 1.8 100 years ago? 100 years ago, the whole world was at 1.8 billion people. Now today, we are at 7.8 billion people. 7.8 billion people? 7.8 billion people? When 100 years ago, we were at 1.8. So from the beginning of the history of time, not the United States, the beginning, beginning of history of time, it took us to 1918 to get to 1.8. But just the last 100 years got us to 7.8. Now I'm not even thinking about this anymore. I'm thinking about, oh my God, what's going on with this planet? What are we doing to this planet? You know what I mean? I was like, holy cow. So then I still went and I was like, okay, let me continue looking. The CDC total deaths, 205,372 from the coronavirus. 205,000 deaths in the United States. This is from September 3rd, 2020. This is where this is update. This is update September 30th, September 30th. 2020. So that was yesterday's. Yesterday's update. 205,372 people in the United States died. So I was like, damn, only 205 to the 675? In 1918, we lost 675. And, and on top of it, the CDC also said that 94% of the coronavirus deaths were due to underlining medical condition. That was prior medical condition. Prior... Um, they were sick previously before they got the coronavirus and then they died. 94% is so we're added to this 205,000 people. So this is nowhere near the, you know, the pandemic that the Spanish flu was. Spanish flu was a pandemic. This, our population has increased. Our population has increased. So I was just thinking, I was like, oh my God, the population has not increased. They drastically Increase seven billion people in one hundred years, and you know I've been looking into like lately, like what's going on with the planet and effects on the planet and stuff like that. And then I was like, oh my god! So we looked and looked up information. Sixty-five percent in the last hundred years, sixty-five percent of the wildlife, the animals, have been extinct, due strictly only to the human population growth. 65% of our wildlife, I don't know if you know about it, but a couple hundred years ago in America, somewhere around the 1800s, there was just wild mustangs running around, around and playing wild buffalo. We've killed majority of and, and, and extinct majority of the animals living in just this country alone, the United States, let alone we're talking about globally. Globally in the last hundred years, globally around this earth, 500 species in the last hundred years, have gone extinct. I started reading a list, a list of, of uh, species. Um, the West African black rhino, uh, the white dolphin, the black African white rhino, I seen another study saying they're trying to bring them back and they're, they're, they got sanctuaries and stuff like that and they're doing that for the buffalo I seen as well. Um, uh, they're doing it for a lot of species because we have to because we, we, they are on the brink of death. We, we're killing all the animals from this earth. The list goes on. Tasmanian tiger from Australia. The the Pyrian, uh, I forgot he can't even pronounce it. I'll spell it out. But the ibex from Spain, that's the rams. The rams you used to see at the zoo. The big rams with the big horns that live on the mountains. And you're like, man, how are these these rams living on? Those rams are going extinct. They're they're pretty much gone. You know, the, the list goes on. 500 species. This last 100 years, we killed because of our mass population growth. So... You know, health, healing, and happiness is about positivity. It's all about positive. But this stuff right here, these numbers right here, 
it's very depressing. Like I was like, oh my god, we are we are slowly but surely killing this planet. But health, healing, and happiness. So you have two ways of looking at things: half half full or half empty. How how do you look at the cup, right? So every situation has a positive side to it. There's a negative side. That was the negative side. That population growth and all that stuff. And the coronavirus and wearing a mask and all that stuff. But now let's look at the positive side. Because there is a positive side. The positive side, the reaction, and the outlook, okay? So I knew that the only best way that we're going to survive this, this, this virus that's going around is to build your immune system. You know what I mean? So that's why I was more aware of my health. And then I got more aware of natural healing, learning how like the natural foods, what lemon does for you, what garlic does for you, what ginger does for you, real foods, what real foods, how they also heal us. Why we, why human beings have foods for generations, for generations, because a uh, majority of all these foods have healing powers, you know, whatever bananas, these are things that our bodies need and they flourish off of, they work better off of. You know what I mean? So I learned about natural healing, uh, plants and stuff like that, aloe and just stuff that that comes from this earth that our bodies react to the most, the best, naturally. Um, and then I, another great thing that happened during this, uh, the virus, uh, you know, the lockdowns and stuff like that was the earth had a chance to heal. So there was good things happening. There's good things. There was good, great things happening. With this, you know, there was a lot of people that were staying home and, 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 and I was able to learn all this stuff, start actually researching because now I'd be stuck going to work and I would have been not studying any of this information. Uh, another great thing that came out from it, I was able to walk more and it's good for me. And guess who else it's good for? It's good for the earth. Walk to your local store. My jewels is like less than a mile away. It's maybe seven blocks. My park is less than a mile away, like, like seven, six blocks. Uh, our target, <laughs> walk. Walk to these stores. You know what I mean? Walk to them. To buy a cart. Bring your groceries home. Enjoy walking. After you eat dinner at night, go for a walk. Digest your food. Walk, man. It's good for you. It's good for the earth. Stop taking your car when you got to drive around the corner. Stop being lazy, man. Walk, man. This stuff is good for you. Um, awesome thing. New ways to teach your children. Every the children are at home. You can actually teach your children now. You have time to talk to your children. You can monitor the stuff that's going into your children's heads. You can start teaching them these things. You can... You, these children need nurture. Now they, they're home. You can buy them a flute. Buy them an instrument. Buy them some paint brushes. Buy them some Play-Doh, some clay. Buy them, you know, let them, you know, nurture their 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 imaginations. You know what I mean? Um, really, just let them grow. Let them grow. You know, when you were a child, you hated being restricted. You're like your parents didn't understand, and you didn't want to be forced. Nobody likes to be forced to do anything. When you're forced to do something, it's like hell. You know, if you don't like music and you don't want to do music, then don't do music. You know, but if you love it, give that child, let that child play with a, with a guitar for hours or a drum set or a piano or a flute. Nurture your children. Help them grow. Give them the, the tools that they need. Let them be them. Let them discover themselves. Let Who knows what they're going to turn out to be, man. Help them out. Nurture them. You know, I mean, that's what they need. And here it is, the best thing, the best thing that I learned during the coronavirus is that you can't fix your world from the outside in. You can't fix your world from the outside in. Only from the inside out. Only from the inside out. So you can't fix your world from the outside in. I don't care what you buy. What you buy? So you bought two years ago. You bought a badass pair of Jordans. Three years ago, badass pair of Jordans. But it's some bad pair of Jordans came out last month or last week, and now you want those. The ones that you bought two years ago are no longer pleasing to you. You're no longer excited about those. Those are two years old. Same thing with your car. 
You were so excited about the new car, and now you're just driving about, driving around miserable in your car with a big car payment. That's why you're driving around miserable in your car. You got to enjoy it for like a month or two, and now you're stuck with it for seven years, paying God knows what. Happiness can't come from the outside in. You buy a house, you're going to want another one. You want a bigger house with a, with a swimming pool. Um, you get a, one job, you want a better job. You're never going to be happy. I can go on. You, I can go on because it's the truth. Happiness doesn't come from the outside in. Happiness comes from the inside out. But you got to learn how to control your emotions, your brain, the way your brain works. You have to fix your health. You know, there's a lot of things that, that go to, but that you, it comes from the inside. Happiness comes from the inside. And we'll go more into that, you know, but we got to, I wanted you guys to understand and see when you do get that happiness from the inside out, now that I fixed myself from the inside out, now it's like when I walk past it, I'm like, oh my God, what are, what's going on with, you know, like, what are we doing? I, I see the pollution and I start, I start seeing other things now because I'm not worried so much about what I need. I need a new car. Or I need, I need, need, yeah, those things will come. They'll come and go. You know how many cars I've had in my lifetime? You know how many apartments and houses I've lived in? You know how many times, like, I, you know, things I've owned that I wanted so bad in the year 2000, I wasn't going to survive. I don't even, I forgot about it. Don't even have it anymore. Don't even need it anymore. So what you need is happiness. You need healing. And you need to be healthy so you can enjoy life, man. Enjoy life. So that's the great things that I learned from this virus, this pandemic, from being inside, I learned all these awesome things, man. These, I'm so excited about life. I'm so excited about living. I'm so excited about today. I'm so excited about what's going to go on tomorrow. You know, I, I'm happy majority of the time. Majority of the time, I'm in my, I'm, I live up here in peace, joy, and love. You know, if you haven't seen my other episode, I go through this. It's the scale of consciousness. This is where majority of the earth is living now in fear, guilt, anger, you know, and desire. You know what I mean? You're, you're just never happy. You keep getting those things. You get a new car, new clothes, new house, new watch, new shoes, new purse. It's just never enough. You're never going to be, you, you can't get happiness from the outside in. Happiness comes from the inside out. And then when it comes from the inside out, you, you will enjoy that new car for a long time. You will appreciate that new car. You will appreciate your house. You will appreciate everything that you got because happiness comes from the inside. Happiness comes from the inside, man. So, you know, we need to worry about fixing this planet. We need to fix it for the kids that got to live here for the next hundred years, for your grandkids, for your children. You know what I mean? For your grandbabies, where do you want them to live? In an earth that you're killing? Don't worry. Don't make your grandbabies. Don't worry about them wearing this. Worry about fixing this planet. I'm working right now to try to make this empty lot next to um, the orange line. I'm working on making that lot, trying to make it a, a, a park and build more trees. We don't need more stores. We don't need more um, strip malls, little mini malls. We need more parks, more trees. More recreational places, man. That's what we need, man. We need positive stuff, baby. That's right. Positive. I am G, the straight shooter. Honest, trustworthy. Let's go. Welcome to another episode. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Health, healing, and happiness. And if you like this stuff, if it resonates with you, hit the like button. Smash that like button. Share this stuff, man. Let everybody know we got a positive, positive show that guys educate this knowledge is